All right, we're back, guys. Uh, I kind of boo booed a little bit. Uh, I've been I've been working on this for about ten fifteen minutes, and I realized I hadn't hit record on the uh, camera. So I'll just have to show you what I've done. And I mean, it's it's not a whole lot. I've just been up in the highlights a little bit. But I've just been taking the this time. I just decided to take the palette knife. I just up up the highlights a little bit on his arm, on his hat where the sun's hitting, down here on his pants leg, and the uh, handle of the net. Same thing on this guy. I just uh, come through and added a little bit of brighter highlights, get that effect of that uh, sun really beating down. And then down here through the water, I just upped it a little bit to bring that light in from this way. To bring your light in, let me get the camera right bring the light in so your eye comes up and it follows this light all the way over into both of your figures. So that's that's as far as I've gotten. But that that's that's basically what we'll be doing today is just highlighting and uh, making getting our darks a little darker in areas where we need and then uh, highlighting uh, our lights where we need them to be a little bit brighter. And right now I'm just getting a roll of paint. And I'm just going to come up here on this uh, fishing rod. I'm going to try to highlight him a little bit. If I can get the paint to pull. There we go. Just going to run all the way up the length of this pole, and don't don't worry about make trying to get the highlight all the way across. Whenever the paint breaks and it pulls off where it pulls off, that's that's what you'll just have, and uh, the the viewer's eye will uh, come up with the rest, and they'll know that's a fishing fishing pole. And you can come down here on the this line a little bit. Maybe it's catching a little bit of light. This side, well, it looks more like a raindrop. But we're just trying to put indications so the uh, viewer will know what we got going on. Come over here and just make a good enough. But we'll come down here and work on the rocks and the water a little bit. So it'll just get us some white, some just a touch of blue. A little bit more white. And don't don't over mix your paint. Leave it marble, but this technique's the same Bob Ross, uh, how he taught. I mean, you're just getting that roll of paint on the edge of the knife. So it'll pull off as you're, as you're coming. And all we're doing, like down here in the water, to give us more indications, we'll just come across to give us more indication of a water line. Just get that little bit of sparkle in there. And brighten it up in areas. Catching a little bit of sparkles from the sun there. Now this paint's really, really thick at the end. A little bit darker down in here, but we still want some thick paint. To, uh, now you don't have to use the palette knife, but I'll, I had it out and I just, I just figured I'd show you this, this too. But you can see how that's adding sparkles to your water. And it, it'll actually start looking like flowing water. We'll come up in here. Add little areas. Just here and there. You don't have to uh, do it all over. This just comes with practice. And you'll learn when, when less is more when you should and shouldn't be. Hi. 
highlight in certain areas. When your blade gets low on paint, you can press a little harder and put, press and run it across, and it'll actually look like that breaking water effect. And up here, where raindrops are hitting, hitting, we can uh, go a little bit brighter, make those guys, those splashes, kind of stand out. That's a chunky piece. Just putting little dabs. And none of this is pure white. It's a, it's got blue and red in it to gray it off. We don't you, there's remember I said last time, you're not gonna see pure white in nature. The same thing goes with black. You you'll never see pure black. You'll have more to the warm side of a dark or you have more to a cool side of a dark and that's how you that, and that's how you really uh, spice up your painting when you have the mixture of the two cool and warm constantly thinking cool and warm as you're going sparkles add a little bit of a sparkle in here there we go and that should yeah it's looking pretty good we'll go down here in the rocks we'll mix up a little bit of a dark just red and blue that brown we were mix messing with yesterday and we'll throw just a little bit of yellow to lighten that up I don't want that super dark right here. Right? But we can come in, get a, gotta get that paint on there, that roll of paint, and then we can start adding little deep cracks and crevices in here. Make it look like it's really in shadow. If you've watched Bob Ross, you'll know he always used the palette knife to sometimes fill the brush. But when he was doing rocks and such, he was always using the uh, palette knife to highlight and darken. We'll come up, we'll get some white, and there's a little bit of that light red up here. Get a little roll of paint. We'll highlight on the rocks a little. And remember that if you've tried using a palette knife, it's really light pressure. You, I mean, you're basically holding it with just these two fingers. And we're just letting the canvas take what it wants. But if you notice the way I set this up on these rocks, the, this green coming, of course the complement color of uh, green is red, and then you come up on these gray red rocks, this warm with this cool will help you out in your painting, pop it out. And same thing up here when you get this cooler greens then you get this orange or warm brown against it it's gonna pop out cool and warm all the time Course we're working in layers 
you just don't want to smear it all over in one flat area you'll leave these little dark areas in between your lights and it'll help you separate I'm just working the paint around a little bit. Just trying to imagine little bumps and projections on the rock. Just to make it a little bit more interesting so it's just all not just flat collar on there. But you can see up close it's just it's just rolled out in layers, and that'll make your rock. adding a little bit lighter brown I think it'll help it was looking a little bit too flat to get that three dimension you want three to four three dimensional look you want three to four collars should have that should have helped a little bit I don't know if you can see it or not but yeah that makes it that makes it a little bit a little bit better might come in and break some of this up just rub it a little bit Get a little bit more white. We'll come back and work on that water line just a little bit. Still the same thing. Still, it's not pure white. It's got blue and this red collar in it. We'll come back. Water's really splashing up against those rocks. A little bit coming up in here, maybe maybe up in here where that rain's where the rain's coming down. It's starting to uh, filter down here. We're getting a little bit of runoff. down into here. Maybe up in here. You can add some more rain. Even with the pallet on. Touched the end of my 
knife right in the blue blue paint is the worst to try to get it off it is so strong we'll just add some here and there just to give the indication of bigger raindrops closer up you just in here to balance it balance it out a little bit got that rain hitting maybe up in here one or two and all I'm doing is touching now and it'll, it'll just pull just just the right amount off. There we go. These guys are gonna have to, or be like me, I'll just stay out in it all day, but these guys are gonna have to head to the house or they're gonna, they're gonna have pneumonia. shadow blue up under this rock where this water is running a little bit of a shadow there we go and we're getting pretty close to having a finished painting might come just a this net come up here pull a little bit to define these lines a little bit more little bits yeah there we go now you can see it maybe a little drop There we go. And maybe, maybe, maybe just a couple of bright drops on this on these rocks in here in areas where the rain's coming down. And one big thing you gotta watch too, whenever you, whenever you're highlighting. A lot of people they'll try to fit the painting inside the size of inside the size of your canvas, but you want what you want to make sure you do every time is come in from all the way out on the outside of the canvas, so it's like that picture is just coming in to there and uh, making one big picture instead of you trying to fit the painting inside. Good spot. Poosh. A little bit there. Poosh. Pull up a little bit of water just here. Maybe a little splash here. Yeah. It's just a wet, wet, rainy day.
There we go. But you can see, you can see all how the highlights really bring that out. And then you got these bigger raindrops we added today, push these figures back. So it's like they're further back into the painting. And uh, it really, it really gives a good rain effect. And with that, I think, I think we're done with it. Only thing we got, we had to sign it. And I was told, you, you may not think it's important, but I was told your, your signature is just as important. You just don't want to flop something down. You want to put a little thought into, just like we're trying to balance this painting out. Right now, it's, it's pretty well, but we got more on this side, so we don't want to sign it on this side and put, put more weight of our painting on this side. We probably want to come over this way and sign it to kind of help balance the painting out. All we're doing is using our thin liner brush, getting our paint nice and nice thin so it'll flow. And we signed it. There it is. This one will be ready to uh, get a photo it up on my website and you know this this we've been at this painting probably I don't know, maybe three -ish hours I mean it's it's a little bit it's a lot smaller actually than what I usually do normally I do the, the smallest I go is 24 by 36 but this one's only 20 by 24 I just got a couple of smaller ones to kind of test out how I, if I could if 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 I could explain how I was what I was doing, or uh, and to make it easier on me, a smaller painting that we can get through instead of a twenty four by thirty or or thirty by forty or or twenty four by thirty six something that uh, I'm I, it takes probably ten fifteen more hours on it. I didn't want to have a ten part video series on my first attempt. At trying this and showing you how I go about it and how you can make a, a painting stand out and something that people really want to buy if that if that's what you're if you're into art to uh, sell other than uh, art makes me happy I, when I'm sitting and doing art everything else disappears I, I get engrossed on what I'm doing and it's it's just my like people have meditation time this is my meditation time it doesn't matter if I mess up on the figures or what I mess up all I have to do is wipe it off and start all over again. You you can't get frustrated when you're doing this and learning. I've I've been at this like I said in the last video for probably about two and a half, maybe three years now, and I've put I've put thousands of hours in on this. I I mean I've I've went th I've went through a lot of canvases and through a lot of paint, trial and error, and learning and reading and watching videos to help learn and. Uh, New, new techniques and everything and I'm trying to put it all together so maybe I can start uh, conveying that to whoever would like to learn from me on how I go about it and how how you can create beautiful paintings I mean in a short amount of time but to, to two and a half years to to get to the part where I mean I, I'm not patting myself on the back but I am a gallery artist with several galleries that I work with and uh I've sold through those galleries. I've sold on the internet, and uh, everything's starting to come together. Now I want to get into the teaching aspect because I want those that have a passion for this. I don't want them to get frustrated and quit because I know when I started it was tough, and I'm like, man, what am I doing? I said, I'll just be a hobby artist and just do whatever. But then I thought about I said, no, I really want to get into this line of business. I want to, I want to create art that people want to buy. But uh, anyways... I'll be doing, uh, once I get set up on another one, here in the next uh, next few days or so, I'll either do another small one like this so we can go through another one, or I'll put together 
a larger one that I normally do, like a 30 by 40, or I'll, I'll get one to show you. But like this 30 by 40, this, I don't know how well you can see it. I might have to pull back. But uh, this guy here, it was done using everything I just showed you uh, on creating rain. That's how I created the snow effect on this one. And you can see it's basically the same thing through here. We pulled down right after it dried after a day to create that haze back here in the back. And then we used our liner brush. I think, I don't know if I went back with, uh, I don't think I went back with a palette knife on this one, but uh, I used the liner brush to create the bigger clumps. And then we did the same thing with the brush flipping to create the smaller, to create the smaller flakes of snow and everything coming down. And uh, it worked out well. I mean, you could do snow this way or rain this way and it, it, it just works. But it was the same principle here on this one. I wanted, I wanted this to be a cold painting, of course, because it's a snow, a snow scene. But the main thing is, I wanted the figures to be the warm colors in this, so they just popped off the canvas. And you can see this this warm yellow, these warm reds, this red back here on this saddle, uh, saddle storage bags, whatever you want to call them, really pops off this these cold greens and blues here in the background. And same thing with bringing the light where I told you there a minute ago, you want to come all the way off the edge of the canvas with the light. You want to come all the way off the side and bring it in to where it's heading towards your figures. You don't want to start in here somewhere or something because uh, it, then it doesn't make much sense. You want to bring that all the way across like that sun's coming up, like this pass that they're coming around. The sun's actually still hitting on this area and as he walks right into here, that's when the sun hits him. But anyways, uh, if, you, if you've liked this first attempt, uh, like and subscribe to my YouTube. It really helps me out. And uh, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to get into this, but I'll need your support. And I'll, I'll need people that want to learn and want to watch this. I mean, leave me a comment and say, yeah, I'd like to see more. Because uh, I re I'd really like to, I'd li if, even if I could help one person learn and follow their dreams of doing art, that would be my goal. But uh, I'd, li I'd like for uh, hundreds or dozens of you to get into this if you really want to, and uh, I'll, I'll help you out every bit I can. Well, anyways, thanks for watching, and uh, let me know how you like this. Talk to you later. Bye.